Hello everyone and welcome to MATLAB and Simulink tutorials. In this tutorial, we explain how to export Simulink simulation data to the MATLAB workspace for further processing. Here is the motivation. Namely, if you are simulating a control system or a dynamical system, you would often need to export simulation data from Simulink to the MATLAB for further data analysis and processing. Consequently, you need to know how to export Simulink simulation data. As a test case, we simulate a nonlinear dynamical system in Simulink. Here is our dynamical system. It is a pendulum system. The pendulum system consists of the rod to which we have attached a ball with a mass of m. The length of the rod is l and theta or theta, however you like to pronounce it, is the angle of rotation of the rod. Over here, we assume that there is a control torque T that acts on the rod and that rotates the whole system. The pendulum is suspended at this point and can freely rotate around this point. By using Newton's second law, we obtain a differential equation describing the dynamics of the pendulum system and the differential equation is shown over here. In this equation, g is the gravitational acceleration constant, l is the length of the rod, theta is the angle of rotation, m is the mass and t is the control torque. Next, we can define a to be equal to g over l, b to be equal to 1 over ml squared and u to be equal to t and consequently our model will look like this. In the sequel we will use Simulink to simulate this model and then we are going to export the simulation data to MATLAB workspace and we are going to plot the results. Ok, let's start with the implementation. The first step is to create a new script in which we will define the system parameters. Let's start. The gravitational acceleration is 9.81. Then the mass is 5, the length of the rod is 1, the parameter A is G over L, the parameter B is 1 over mass multiplying L squared. And that's it. Let us now select this and press F9 to load all the parameters. In addition to these model parameters, we need two initial conditions for simulating the dynamics. Namely, we need theta 0 and theta dot 0. That is, we need initial condition for theta and initial condition for the angular velocity theta 0. So let's type theta 0 is equal to, for example, pi over 3 and the first derivative of theta denoted by d theta 0 is equal to 0 0.1. Good. Let's select this and let's evaluate these parameters. The next step is to start simulating. Consequently, over here, type Simulink and press Enter. Next, click on blank model to create an empty model. Let's start with modeling. First, over here, I'm going to write the dynamics equation. We have theta double dot is equal to minus A sine theta plus b multiplying u. Now, from this equation, we see that we need two integrators to solve this equation for theta. So let's implement the dynamics. First of all, double click here and search for sine. And let's add the sine block. The input to this sine block is theta as we can see from here. Consequently over here we will have theta. 
the theta will be the output of a two integrator block and we are going to add these two integrators later on okay then we need the gain over here and the gain value should be a so double double click here and search for gain and the gain value should be a double click here and type a now over here you can see that Simulink is able to access all the parameters from the MATLAB workspace. Here it is. Next, we need an add or a sum block. Double click here and search for sum. Here it is. Double click on sum and let's rearrange the location of ports. Do this and change this plus to minus. Good. Now connect the output of the gain to this minus input port of the sum. Good. Over here, we need to model B multiplying U. Consequently, double click and search for gain. The gain value should be B and click OK. Connect this part with this part and the input to this gain block should be U. Later on, we are going to model the U. Next, the output of this sum block is everything that is on the right hand side. Next, we need to add two integrators. Double click here and search for an integrator. And this integrator will produce theta dot. Let's specify the initial condition. Double click here and add over here D theta zero and you can see that we can immediately access the variable from the MATLAB workspace and click on OK. Next, we need another integrator. Double click here and search for an integrator. Here it is. Connect this part. Connect the output of this integrator to this sign block and here it is. The input to this gain block should be control U. In this video tutorial, for simplicity, let's model u simply as a step function. Consequently, click here and search for step, and here it is. Good. That's it. Next, let's simulate this dynamics. To simulate dynamics, simply press run over here, and the dynamics is simulated. However, we cannot see the simulation results. To see the simulation results, double click here and search for scope. And over here, let's connect the scope to Terra and click run again and double click on scope. And after some time, you will see how Terra behaves over time. Good. Next, let's make sure that everything is okay. We can immediately see that if we click over here, we didn't specify the initial condition. Consequently, let's add theta zero over here and let's apply, okay, and let's repeat the simulation. Double click over here and now you can see nice oscillation starting from pi over three. The next step is to teach you how to export the simulation results outside of Simulink. That is how to export the simulation results to MATLAB. Okay, first of all, to export the simulation results, we need to use the outport block. Consequently, double click here and search for outport. Outport. And if you click on Outport, you will see this block. Now, connect this block to the variable that you want to export. Let's say that we want to export Terra. Double click over here. You'll see the port number. The port number is automatically assigned and don't touch the port number. Over here, give the name to the signal. For example, let's call this signal as Terra. And after that, you will see 
the name over here. Next, let's export the first derivative of theta. Again, double click here and search for output. Here it is and connect this to theta dot. Double click here and type the signal name d theta, standing for the first derivative of theta. Good. Observe one very important thing. Here the port number is 1, then automatically the port number is increased to 2. That is, every time you add a new output block, the port number will be changed. Good. Next, let's simulate this again, such that the data can be exported to MATLAB. Good. Next, let's go back to the MATLAB script and the command window. Next, type over here who's. And notice one difference over here. You'll see this out. This out comes from the two output blocks. Consequently, we are able to access the simulation data by accessing out. So let's see what is out. We can see t out, this is time. And if you type out.t out, you'll get the time vector that's used for simulation. Good. Next, we have this y out. So let's see what is y out. Out dot y out. And let me now nicely write it. Yes, here it is. And you can see theta and d theta. Okay, and here it's written use braces to access, modify, or add elements using index. So let's see. If we type out.y out 1, we will get this variable. And if you want to get the values, we will simply type values over here. And here they are. Good. So let's repeat again. If you want to access the first one, you'll type this. If you want to access the second one, you'll get this one. Okay, so let's create a MATLAB graph that will plot the values. So let's, for example, first start from this one over here. Let me copy this. Let's go to the MATLAB script over here and let's plot, or actually let's create a figure and then let's type this. Let me now do plot and let's on the X or the horizontal axis add time. We can type out dot t out to access the time vector and on the vertical axis we will plot values. And let's see this, what we will get if we evaluate this block. Oops, I made an error here. So let me just see what we are getting here. Here I need to modify one very important thing. Since I cannot just do this, I need to type dot data to get the data. Consequently, if you want to get the data, you want to you need to type here dot data. And let's now see this. And voila, here it is. This is theta as a function of time. So let's also plot theta dot, let theta be the red color, and let's copy this, let's paste this, and let's plot theta dot by just changing this index over here and everything should be the same. And here it is, and let's change the color for theta dot, for example, let's use black color. And here it is. Let me just close this. Do it again. Beautiful. And we can clearly see that the black line is theta dot and the red line is theta. Good. Okay, that's all for today and thanks.